well. A little bit of a tough act to follow. Uh, I don't know Rob in quite as long, but I also date from the Richard days. Um, but however, I have one special characteristic. It is solely through my inaction that Robin got her first job. Oh, all right. Uh, we, were, we were both interviewing um, for patent law jobs at the same time. And I got a bunch of offers. I had uh, clerked at the firm that Robin was looking to work at, Blum Kaplan, and they kept putting her off, or putting Richard off at the point. Um, and I had all these other offers, and I asked, well, I don't know, whether I'm going to go to Beverly Hills or New York, and they kept saying, well, what are you doing? I don't know. And finally, they said, you know, we need one person, and pretty unlikely that I'm going to show up. So they extended an offer to Richard, and well, next day I said, okay, I'm going to come. And they were like, oh shit, uh, what are we going to do? And so we both showed up. And they didn't have any place for us to sit. They had no offices left, because the planning at this place was really very inadequate. Um, but they did have a room, and the room was at the back of the library. They had a small little closet with windows that had two enormous desks, one with a Lexus or Westlaw terminal on it, and a three-wheel, big-wheel thing, you know, those little toys that the kids have, or not so little toys. And, um, and the two of us sat in this room. I sat in sort of the corner. I couldn't get out unless Richard got up and we moved the big wheel off to the side. And, and so they, they, they threw us in there, and they threw in files, and it was almost sort of like throwing in meat into a, into a lion's cage. We got no work done. We were just, we just cracked jokes. We made fun of the senior partner. <laughs> This guy, Harold Kaplan of Blum Kaplan, Blum had been dead a hundred years, um, had no eyebrows. He was, he, he was this sun-worshipping tennis player, he would go out and he would play, and he always had this tan, he'd be in Florida, but he had no eyebrows. It, just, it, was, it, it, it really looked awful. But what would happen is, before one of us would go in to talk to Harold about some matter that he wanted to turn over, the other would go, he has no eyebrows. <laughs> Then it would be, but Harold, you have no eyebrows. And so we would like, we had to trot into to Harold's office, and all that we had in our brain was, but Harold, you have no eyebrows. And Harold would be standing there, and he's very humble, and sort of like, wow, I'm very important, my girl. And all that was going through the brain was, How none of, neither of us was it, actually ever said that to Harold, I don't know. There, it was, it was Second week we were there, we sort of got our things together, and somehow I convinced Richard to go into Jim Silverman, who was the administrative partner. We go, listen, uh, when did we get our vacation? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go over very well at all. <laughs> we, we, we worked like, like, like crazy men. Uh, we had all sorts of fun there. I mean, that, that was a really good time. We only worked together for about a year, year and a half. And then Robin headed off to digital and then to other to Sony and to other places. And but we always kept in touch. I mean, we were all always really, really close. I mean, we had formed a bond and um, we had we had wonderful times there. I mean, people have talked about Robin's heart and Richard had the same heart. Um, <laughs> there was there was a <laughs> Give, bring it in, I'll take it over, we'll get a repair. It was 
$24, $32, something you got to repair. And Alex says, no problem, David. How much is it? So $32. Writes him a check, $32. David Goldberg. <laughs> He's looking at the check. In those days, $32 is $32. So finally, he says to Alex, oh, Alex, I have to really tell you, you know, my name isn't David Goldberg, it's Richard Goldstein. He looks at me and goes, When did you change it, David? Yeah. 